Today on Shop Nation, I give you my review on my new cordless airless paint sprayer from Graco. I'll tell you what I like, what I don't like, and why you uh, actually probably shouldn't buy this one. What's up you guys, I'm Travis, this is Shop Nation, and after many requests, I will do a tool review on the new cordless airless paint sprayer from Graco. Now if you've watched the channel in the past, you know that I've used a corded version of the Graco airless paint sprayer for a bunch of projects. I actually really liked it. I did a separate review on that if you wanna go check it out. But I've since upgraded to a cordless version, which uses this Dewalt battery down here, that has a lot more versatility and adjustability. Now I'll start right off the bat by saying that this model is about twice as expensive as the corded version that I did a review on before. And actually in that original review, I go through kind of the three different groups of these sprayers offered by Graco. And this one exists in kind of that upper category. But hopefully this video will help you answer the question of, is it worth that much more money? Now I'll start with the standard disclaimer in that the corded version that I bought and I did the review on about two years ago, I bought with my own money. There was zero influence from Graco. I made the video with zero influence from Graco. But because the video did surprisingly well, Graco actually reached out to me and told me how much they enjoyed the video and that they'd like to send me a sprayer for free, which is where this TC Pro came from. So I did not buy the sprayer, but with the gift came zero strings or obligations. They actually didn't even tell me I had to do a review on it. But now that I've used it for a solid year on many projects, most of which have been part of this channel, I feel like I'm at a point where I can talk about it and give you my opinion on whether or not I think it's worth the money. Also, a ton of people have asked about this review, so here it is. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll go over the specs of the sprayer. Then we'll move into the review portion where I tell you the things that I like and I don't like about the sprayer, and then we'll finish it all up with a summary and my final recommendation. So again, this is the Graco TC Pro Cordless Airless Paint Sprayer, model number 17N166. There is also another version called the TC Pro Plus, which allows you to spray in flammable materials, but we're not gonna talk about that today. In this model, you can spray everything from non-flammable lacquers and stains to pretty thick latex paint. So it's actually pretty versatile. Now, like I mentioned in my previous video, in my review of the corded sprayer, you should think of the lineup from Graco in a couple of different tiers. You have the base tier, which is where that sprayer existed. There wasn't much adjustability, basically only had two speeds. It was corded and it was essentially a throwaway sprayer, meaning as soon as the pump inside died, you gotta buy a new one. The next level up included sprayers built very similarly, but had a lot more adjustability, meaning that you can really fine tune pressures and probably get a little bit better paint quality, but they unfortunately use the same tips and are not repairable. And then you move into that third tier and that's where this sprayer lives along with one other that we'll talk about here in a minute, and that's the Graco Ultra Cordless Airless Paint Sprayer. Both of those models feature obviously cordless capability, so they use a standard DeWalt 20 volt battery, which is really cool because there's a lot of people out there that have DeWalt tools already. They use much more high quality tips. The TC Pro uses its own proprietary tips, whereas the Graco Ultra uses the same Rack X FFLP tips that they use in all of their higher end sprayers. Also similar in both of these models is that the pump and all the guts of this thing is completely repairable, meaning you can replace it when it goes bad. So you're automatically buying into a much longer life of this tool versus one of those cheaper options. Now both the TC Pro and the Ultra have adjustable pressures from basically zero to 2000 PSI, which can be adjusted with this knob on the back of the sprayer. This makes it really easy to really fine tune whatever paint or finish you're using when you're using the sprayer. Now this entire line of sprayers from the bottom tier all the way up to this tier all use the same flex liner bags, which are disposable or you can actually clean them out and reuse them. And they come in two different sizes. You have the standard size and then they have the taller one, which I think is 32 ounces. So for a little bit larger jobs, it's kind of nice having more paint in the gun. Okay, now let's move on to the actual review. All right, so the first thing I really like about the sprayer is the battery, which I know is kind of in the name. It's cordless, so of course it has a battery. But hear me out. The obvious benefits of having a cord is that you'd never run out of battery. But with these type sprayers, you're never really doing a job where a battery should ever run out. If you are, you're using it for too big of a job. In fact, this battery has lasted me several jobs. But the other bigger problem is that a cord tends to drag through wet paint. And I'm sure I'm no different than anyone else out there. If something has wet paint on it, I'm going to touch it. So as you have this long cord dragging through paint doing your paint job, chances are you're going to get paint on something that you don't intend to get paint on. That's where this comes in really handy. You don't have to worry about that. 
Now the second feature I really like about the sprayer is the adjustability, but not just in terms of pressure, also in terms of tips. So because this uses a more advanced tip, you have more tip options, thus making it that much more adjustable. Now, as I mentioned, the TC Pro uses its own proprietary tips, whereas the other cordless version, the Ultra, uses the standard rack FFLP tips, which makes it kind of nice because most paint stores like Sherwin-Williams carry those tips as standard in a bunch of different sizes. So all of that to say, you can adjust the pressure and the tip to really fine tune this thing and get you a really good paint finish that you can probably use on something other than shop furniture. Now the next thing that I like and is really what separates this from the other lower tiers of sprayers is the fact that you can rebuild the internal guts of this thing, namely the pump. Now it's no secret that this style of paint sprayer has a finite life. And just like the US adult population, heart failure tends to be the number one cause. So these use what's called a Triax pump that you can buy as a total kit and swap it in and out of this thing when that pump takes a crap. For me, that just gives me kind of peace of mind that my investment is actually gonna last a little bit longer and I'm not left dependent on whatever I get from the factory. When you start moving into higher end sprayers that professionals use, they all have the ability to do that. So getting that in a little DIY unit like this, pretty nice. And for number four, my favorite thing about these sprayers are the tips themselves. So we already talked about the ability to rebuild the pump, much like a more expensive sprayer. Well, those more expensive sprayers also use much better tips like these. This TC Pro uses a very similar tip, whereas the Ultra that I've already mentioned before uses the exact same tips as the higher end sprayers. If you look at the two tips side by side, one from the lower end sprayer, one from this style of sprayer, you can immediately see the difference. They clog less, there's a lot more variation available, and they're just made of better material. So kudos to Graco for going with really nice tips on these little DIY sprayers. So we all know nothing is perfect, and in the interest of being fair, I'm gonna talk about the things I don't like about the sprayer, and that starts with but first, let's thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes on a variety of topics that just might help you either develop a new skill set or deepen an existing passion. Now, when I say they have a variety of classes, I am not joking. You can take classes on things like wildlife photography. Oh, neat, a wild stick. Videography. And even bird watching. All right, honestly, I don't know if there's bird watching, but you catch my drift. If you have an interest in it, there's a good chance that there's a Skillshare class for you. Now, I'm very much still a video and photo newbie, so having classes available on things like Photoshop and Premiere Pro is awesome. And since it's curated specifically for learning, there's no ads, you pay one low monthly fee, that's it. Now, if that sounds too good to be true, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the video description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you, Skillshare, and let's get back to talking about paint sprayers. And the first thing is actually the weight. So you obviously have the added weight of the battery, plus because I like using this larger paint reservoir, this 32 ounce version, it just becomes really heavy in your hands as you're making this motion over and over and over. Now there's a caveat with that in that these are not intended for big paint jobs. So I would never recommend anybody paints an entire room or any large surface with this. So I could argue that you probably should never be at a place where your arm's getting tired, but even painting little cabinets and things I have around in my shop, I just felt my arm getting kind of worn out. Now the second thing that I don't like as much about this sprayer and its brother, the Ultra, is price. I gotta be realistic. If there's someone out there looking for an airless paint sprayer and they're looking at one of the lower end models that's 250 bucks, and then jump up to this one which is over $500, that's a pretty big difference. And if I were you out there, I would really wanna understand what I'm getting for that extra $300 and if it's worth it for me. Now there's obviously much more expensive sprayers out there and I already kinda of talked about why I think the price is a little higher, mainly the replaceability and the higher quality components they use with it, but it's still a DIY sprayer and I just think it's kind of expensive. And the third dislike about this thing, which I kind of alluded to earlier, is the fact that you can't or probably shouldn't use this for large spray jobs. So the cabinets behind me probably represent the biggest thing you'd ever wanna tackle with a little handheld sprayer like this. I get questions all the time about using this to repaint rooms or even exteriors of houses. I would say, don't do that. There's actually a fail safe in there that when it overheats, it just shuts off. So you're gonna be battling it constantly shutting off on you because it's overworking itself. So smaller jobs, maybe interior detail jobs, like some trim work or something, this is really where it shines. And because I mainly use mine just for shop furniture and things around my shop, it works out really well. So 
food for thought. And the number four dislike revolves around cleaning. Now, in reality, this thing is actually pretty easy to clean. Depending on what type of paint you're using, I use a lot of latex, which is water-based. So it just means I have to rinse this thing and basically flow water through it until I get all the paint out of the internals. And then you use a product like this pump armor to preserve all of those internal parts. So my issue isn't necessarily that it's hard to clean, but from what I understand of the bigger airless paint sprayers that like a professional would use, it takes basically the same amount of time. So you'd think because it's smaller and simpler, it would be really quick to clean. In a lot of cases, you're actually gonna use the same amount of time using a larger paint sprayer than this one. So it's not a huge deal. I frankly had to think of a fourth thing that I didn't like about it, and that just happened to make the list. All right, so in summary, would I recommend you buy this paint sprayer? No, but let me explain, here's why. I think this paint sprayer, frankly, is excellent. I have had zero problems with it, have had really good results, and been very happy with it so far. You heard me mention a couple times that there's another model besides the TC Pro called the Ultra. Now they both look very similar, they use the same battery, same adjustability, but the Ultra is actually more of a prosumer model. It uses a little bit different components, all still replaceable, it uses much more high quality tips, and I think just generally is a little bit better of a sprayer. And you can actually buy it for the same price as this one. So this TC Pro is very much aimed at sort of the DIYer, which is why it's sold at a lot of the big box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot. The Ultra, because it's prosumer, isn't typically sold there, but going to a place like Amazon, you can find them for basically the same price. So if I were to give you any advice on buying a cordless, airless paint sprayer from Graco, I would say absolutely 100% go buy the Ultra. And of course, I'll have that all linked down in the video description below, but I just think you get much more bang for your buck versus the TC Pro. But if a TC Pro is maybe all you can get in your area, it's still a great sprayer and I would recommend it. I really hope you guys enjoyed that review. More so, I hope it was helpful if you're in the buying process of deciding which sprayer you wanna go with. If you're looking for just a cheap sprayer that you're gonna use very seldomly and you don't care about being super precise in the adjustments, just go for the cheaper corded version and save yourself some money. But if you can see yourself using this type of sprayer at any frequency, especially on things that you really care about the paint quality, I would definitely go with the cordless versions. If the video was helpful, hammer the thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and watch me put these things to work. I will catch you guys on the next project and until then, keep pursuing shop and painting greatness.